Hi, welcome to the very first War and Pieces. Well, we can't go forward unless we do something, and that's go backwards. In order to really get a feel for how war games are played, it's sometimes good to go back to almost kind of the very beginning, and that's with Tactics 2. In this game, we're going to take a look at the godfather of all war games and look how basic units and how basic combat is done and it's done in tactics too so let's go down to the board and take a look right now we're looking at the board for tactics 2 now tactics 2 was a very basic game in 1958 when it came out um, there were mo mass mass printings of this particular game but it's the best way for me to kind of go over some of the basic techniques that you are going to find in war gaming especially if you're somebody that's never done this and is very very intimidated by the whole experience this is the grandfather the the the, the king of them all this is the one where it all started it was a very very simple game of just blue versus red it's as simple as that there weren't any nations there weren't any countries there wasn't any battles or scenarios or anything like that reliving anything it was just blue versus red blue army versus red army nothing more than that infantry armor paratroopers against the same on the other side both very basic there was a blue capital and a red capital and that it just doesn't get any more simple than that now let's talk about the units and this is where I'm gonna zoom in real real close because I really want you guys to see what's going on here now there we go let's get some of these units in here so we can show you what these units are all about all right, I zoomed in so I can show you a little bit about each one of these units and we can talk a little bit because these are the basic symbols that, that you are going to see in each and every game that we're going to be covering. Some will be more, uh, more elaborate and have more information, but the basic information pretty much stays the same. Combat factor will always be on the left. So, as you can see, Right here, we have a combat factor of one and a basic movement, uh, movement allowance of five. Over here, we have a two and a seven. On top, the X's regards the size. Now, let's talk about the individual units themselves. Anything with a square and an X in it always denotes infantry. There may be an M inside there for mountain infantry or um, um, a parachute symbol for paratroopers or maybe an A for amphibious uh, infantry. Anytime you see something with a round a, um, or an oval type of uh, denotion within a triangle, it is considered armor. This is always armor. And then over here with a symbol in here, like right now we have a one, this denotes a headquarters. Now a lot of times there's a thing called supply. So let's take a look here and just back out a little bit and take a look at a supply route. A supply route is usually something that can connect two lines. So all these squares with nothing in between them would denote that this is getting supply. So it would use its full, full um, armament value and movement value. It's in, it's in supply, so it's getting gasoline or stuff like that. If something was in between, it would be cut off from supply, and that may cause to suffer a penalty in some games. Movement is very simple. These are squares, but for the most part, you'll see hexes, and you'll be able to move per hex. Like on a road, you can move pretty much freely, as we're doing right here. But maybe crossing a river, there's a penalty where you would have to, uh, maybe it would cost two to cross a river, so you would go 
two, three, four. There you go. And that would be your movement for that particular turn. Let's talk about combat, because combat is probably the thing that really gets, gets to people and can really cause a lot of hardship here. Now, right here we have two units together, okay? And they have a combat value together of just one. But over here, if we were to match up our tanks and our infantry, we have a combat value of three. So it would be three to one. So on a chart, which they denote, and let's just bring that right in there and we'll zoom in on it a bit. If the red was attacking and they had no chance, a choice but to attack, they would be attacking at odds that are one to three. Okay? And what would happen probably wouldn't be good because you roll on a d6. And we roll the five. So what would happen on a one to three on a five? The attacker would be eliminated. So those units would get wiped out. Even though you attacked, it would not be very, very good for you. But sometimes you have no choice because there are a chance that you can go attacker moves back to you break break combat or you force like on a one to two odd. There's a chance that you can force the uh, defender to go backwards or exchange. It really depends on what the odds are. Now, if the blue was attacking the red here, it would be three to one. And on three to one odds, we would roll and we roll the six. And what that comes out to be is defender eliminated. So these two would just go away and these guys would keep rolling on. And that's pretty much the very simplistic idea of how this game is played. It's very, very simple. It's war games in general are very, very simple in a way. It's when you start stacking and get into different types of things. Stacking would be as such. There's some, some games that have stacking allowances. So you would take and you would make a command group. You would maybe take a, um, a command group where this is has an attack value of four and you would use the highest movement value or the lowest depending on the rules of seven and these would all stand in one square and then you would come with your group and come and attack and that's where you would exchange in certain combats say it was one to one you would both lose some enemies and 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 you know depending on the roll of dice terrain plays into effects in different type of games there's just a lot that can go on but at the very core of it the very simplistic core is just taking and playing units against units and with tactics particularly tactics 2 here it is just a very simplistic red versus blue and like I said, there's only four pages of rules to this. And you can find this game just about anywhere. There's rules for going over bridges. Maybe maybe certain thing, certain armor can't go through, through rivers and stuff like that. And ranges and artillery. Very, very, very just simplistic game that will teach you the very basics of wargaming. And that's why I started with this, so you wouldn't be intimidated when we start talking about some bigger games and some different games that have a lot to it. I will be very detailed in doing playthroughs throughout this series. Another thing that's really kind of cool is that weather always plays a big part in war games. And there's a weather chart at the beginning of the game, so you can get a different feel for each game and expand upon just, you know, going at it red versus blue. This is a great game to take your seven, eight, nine year old with and just go through and teach them the very basics of war gaming. Well, how, how it works, how the mechanics work, and then gradually work your way up to bigger and better things if, if he likes it, he or she likes it. So let's head up top and I'll give you some of my closing thoughts on this game.
Tactics 2 is the holy grail of beginner war games. It's so simplistic, so easy to learn, an easy read, a lot of fun. No, the art isn't up to nowadays type of games and things like that, but it has a great militaristic feel to it. You can learn a lot from it, and if you have a child that you want to introduce to war gaming, this is the perfect place to start. And for those of you who are just watching this that have been intimidated by people not taking the time to show you how to play this, because to be honest with you, and I may catch some for this, a lot of the old timers have their click and they don't want to take the time to teach the next generation. You guys are the next generation of war gamers, board gamers, and we should take our time as the elder statesmen to show you all the things that have come before this golden age so you can experience some of the good stuff some of the bad stuff so you can find what fits you some of you may have wanted to try this but just are so intimidated by some of these games the whole point of this series is to to really show you how this works and the best way is to go on the board game geek ebay you can get this game for 10 to 20 dollars cheap cheap and, and, and fully intact. Uh, I've had this for a hundred years, this copy, and I'll probably have it for a hundred more. Um, it means a lot to me. It's a beginner war game, and I still break it out and play it with, with my daughter. My daughter, who doesn't like war games, likes to play this game because it's easy to play and it's a lot of fun. And if they win, which sometimes I let her win, it gives her that gratification that she built, beat the old war general himself. <laughs> so, if I had to grade this particular classic of the game, this is definitely a 9.5 out of 10. Um, this is a great starter for you guys. I was so glad to be able to show you this as the very first of War and Pieces. And as we go, we're going to just get into bigger and better games. And not just keep it to all these little chits. There are some games out there, some war games, that you can play with cards and other things. So we're going to be looking at anything to do with uh, war games. Next week I've got a real treat for you, so I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you join me back here for War and Pieces. Until next time, it's me, Rob Orn, and I'll see you when I see you. Thanks for watching.